Marcus Johnson, the Bucks are retiring your jersey on March 24th. No one will ever wear number eight again. What does that mean to you? So Delhi can't have it back. No he can't have it back. No Delhi in number no eight. <laughs> Never again. No, Katie. Um, it's just uh, one of the greatest honors that a team can do for a player is, is kind of take your, your jersey number out of circulation. And uh, it's happened for me at uh, high school, at Crenshaw High School, at UCLA with number 54. And now to have it happen with the Milwaukee Bucks is just uh, a culmination of all things that have been positive in my life and my career. And I'm really appreciative of the front office for, for taking that step, making that gesture to show me how much they appreciated me. And not only me, but that team and the way we played and the effort that we gave in those early 80s. Well, you're definitely deserving. How much do you think Milwaukee has changed since when you were a player here? It's changed a lot. And, uh, you know, it, it changed tremendously when I was here for the first time in about 20 years for the 40th anniversary celebration back in 2008. And I, I came downtown and got lost because I just wasn't used to all the new buildings and construction and 794 freeway. What the heck is that? We didn't have that. All we had was 94 and 43 when I was here. But uh, it, it's changed tremendously and for the better, and it continues to grow. And that's why Fiserv Forum, this whole downtown arena complex, is so important in terms of the, of the future growth of Milwaukee. Speaking of the arena, let's go back a bit. What was it like playing in the Mecca? Mecca was great, man. It was uh, it was the smallest venue in the league even at that time. There were about 10,900 people. They expanded it maybe two years later. I got all excited, and they expanded it from 10,900 to about 11,003. You know, so it was, it was about a 13-seat expansion. But but it was one of the most intimidating places in the league to play. I used to always get tickled. It'd be 30 degrees at night in the middle of February, which is a warm Milwaukee night. You know, keeping things in context, and we play the Lakers, and my buddy Norm Nixon and Magic Johnson and, and Jamal Wilkes, they'd have on these fur coats, and man, I don't know how you do this, man, it's so cold, man, it's 30 degrees, it's like a, it's like a summer day for us back here, but uh, the Mecca was a great place to play, uh, Frank Charles, the organist, I remember uh, one of my favorite moments was when I'd catch a lob or do something, hang in midair and make a, make a tough shot, he would play the daring young man on the flying trapeze, and I still remember that, and I would just kind of get chills when I'd hear that play. Do you have a favorite game that sticks out in your mind when you think back to your career? Yeah, and probably the uh, fourth game of the series when we swept the Boston Celtics in the early 80s. And we swept them. We beat them the first two games in Boston, which nobody expected. We were an underdog in that series. The great Larry Bird, Robert Parrish, Kevin McHale, Danny Ainge, just a terrific team. And then... Uh, we beat them game three here, and then game four, the, fan, the fans brought out the, brought out the brooms, but I was so nervous about finishing off the play. I'm like, you know, keep those hidden until after this game has uh, been decided. But that, that, that game number four, I think I had about 33 points and 12 rebounds, and, and I played Larry Bird in that game, and uh, we swept them for, for nothing, which was uh, one of the biggest kind of upsets in Boston Celtic history, so proud to be a part of that, too. Any cool hangouts or restaurants that you'd go to after games, Big Win? Well, well, Major Gooseby's was always there, and uh, that, that would be an occasional hangout. But when they built a new disco downtown called the Park <laughs> Avenue, and uh, it was the closest thing to, like, Studio 54 that we were going to get in Milwaukee. So that was a good place, all the smoke and all the lights and all that, and just a great place to hang out. But my favorite place was a place called the Safe House, which was downtown. I think it's still still there. But they used to have a, a, a big, big drink called the Spies Demise, and they give you these tumblers to take home if you could finish that drink. And I had a wall just full of those drinks. But on your birthday, they would bring you out of the floor in this on this chair. You had to have a password to get in. This thing was like a spy spy theme. Just a real cool place that I used to love to hang out in. Now, I know you're big in community organizations here in Milwaukee. Why is that so important to you? Well, it's important to me because I didn't do enough of it when I was a player here. When I played here, I mean, if the season ended April 30th or May 1st or whatever, I was back in L.A. a day or two later. And uh, I would come back sporadically during the off season, but never really immerse myself in the community. And uh, once I came back this second time around, for me it was a second opportunity to try and give back to, to the people of this community that has given so much to me. I, I came in here as a 21-year-old young man, just you know, unsure of himself, not sure where his destiny was headed. And uh, now I come back as, as a mature adult uh, with a more responsibly minded outlook on life. And I want to pass that along to the young people in Milwaukee. Well, a big congratulations to you. Thank you so much for taking the time. It is an honor getting to work with you every well, thank day. Thank you, Katie. And it's fun working with you also.